So where have I been the last few weeks? Well, the answer is a lot more simple than you would think. Let's get into it. Hey Freethinkers, Chandler here. Before we start, I'm here to tell you guys that this video is sponsored by MyPillow. Be sure to use code CRUMP on MyPillow.com to be sure to get up to 66% off of your very own purchase of a super comfortable MyPillow. I haven't slept without one of these things in a long time, and you shouldn't have to either. Let's get on with the video now, shall we? It has been a little while since I posted my last video. I've done a few little short clips here and there of things happening in the world, but it has been nearly, or actually more than two weeks since my last stream, uh, and about two weeks since my last uh, stream clip. Now this was because I was of course banned off of YouTube once again. And this is actually the uh, email that I got from YouTube regarding why I got banned from YouTube, or I got my, what is it, like second community guideline strike, and I would have gotten my third, but my previous one had fallen off, the one I got for, I don't know, something about Project Veritas, I think. But anyways, uh, it says, hi Chandler, our team has reviewed your content, yada yada, medical misinformation. What was the medical misinformation? Was stating the fact that Dr. Fauci lied to the American people. Now, we're obviously not going to jump too far into that because I don't want to catch another medical misinformation strike now, do I? But we have to make some changes around here on the channel. It's been a long time coming. I actually got demonetized on this YouTube channel more than a year ago, which means that my channel no longer is put in the recommended tab for you to watch. Sometimes it is hidden from your subscription feed. You don't get emails when I go live, all sorts of terrible things like that. So we're going to make a few great changes. I believe they're gonna be great changes at least here on this channel. And the first thing that's going to happen is that this channel is going to be officially retired. Now that doesn't mean no more content will be coming to this channel. If you don't wanna deal with going anywhere else, then this channel is where you will get to stay to see a good amount of my content. Content. But as you can see right up here, we have a brand new YouTube channel name. It is going to be Crump Live. You may know that all my streams have recently been under the name uh, Crump Live. And we've got some more news about live streams, but I do want to show you our brand new Crump Live channel. Now, as you can see, there isn't that much to it yet. Um, but if you would like to subscribe, check it out and follow us over on this new channel, you can do so simply by just going to my channel. Uh, if you just, so yeah, you just look up my channel and here it is. So you can see my uploads. My most recent upload that is currently still public was three weeks ago. And then I have my Mario Kart 8 stream and all these other things we've done. Um, but you may notice that all of my streams that were speckled in between all these times, because you guys do know I go live every week on Tuesdays at 8, are no longer here. And the reason for that is because I actually take them down from YouTube to avoid being banned. So all of my content is hosted on other platforms. But if you want to join us on the new YouTube channel, just go to my community tab and you should be able to see it right here. And it's going to be joining my little channels tab shortly, but this is the new Chandler Crump channel. Now all my videos, all my live streams and all those other things like that will be happening live right here on this channel every week on Tuesdays at eight. But I have a very fun announcement for all of you guys, and to present this best, I'm going to actually come on back to my thing here. Now this is a community tab post I posted up to my community tab to talk about what was going on with my channel and where things are going from here on out. So as you can see, you know, I can read a little bit of it, but I want to focus on this last paragraph here. So what I say is, we'll be changing our process for live streams here. I will be launching a brand new daily show called The Chandler Brief, which will begin airing every weekday at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on February 1st. Yep, that's right, that's my big news. So every single weekday that I can, uh, permitting travel and other things, and I will make announcements about when I can and can't, but that's in the future. Every weekday, we'll be having a live show right here on my new YouTube channel, not this one, but my new YouTube channel, where you'll be able to live watch us talk about a few topics each day at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So that's two central, one mountain time, and right on lunchtime for uh, Pacific Standard Time. So it's a widely accessible time. If you're at work or you're on break or you're getting lunch or something like that, you can listen to it in the background, get your daily catch up and your daily brief of news about what's going on in the world delivered by your favorite Chandler Crump. So this is my new strategy to try to reach as many people as possible, get past the YouTube censorship, and I think it's going to work quite well, keeping that consistent daily stream. You guys are gonna love it. And these streams, we're gonna try our best to keep them as brand safe as possible for YouTube, but if they do get spicy, which, and it's 2022, they more than likely will, you can of course go to my Rumble page, which is linked directly in the description of each and every one of these videos, and will be linked in the description of each and every one of these streams. So to just go there, you let's say for instance, go to one of my videos, as you find it here, you just go down, and it's in the description, you'll be able to find our direct link to our Rumble, and so let's go check it out. So here it is, our Rumble page, and as you can see, every single thing that I've done that is no longer on YouTube, 
is still on Rumble. My videos about Fauci, Biden, my New Year's video, or stream I should say, all this stuff is still available for you to watch. So if you've been wondering where is Chandler, why doesn't he make content anymore? I sure do, it's just not safe for YouTube anymore. So if you wanna see me, definitely make sure you check out our Rumble, which is just rumble.com slash user. You'll find it in the description of this video. Uh, or anyway, just go to Rumble. You can look up Chandler Crump and you'll be able to find me. But I didn't wanna just make a little quick channel update video. I wanted to update you guys on something that is happening uh, right now. Now this is some big stuff. Now you guys may know that last weekend, um, or maybe at the time you're seeing this a little bit earlier than last weekend, uh, we had the massive anti-mandate march in Washington DC. It was huge, let me tell you. I wanna just look at the pictures we have here of the march. It took some video. Uh, our friends Jimmy Levy performed their song, uh, Welcome to the Revolution and This is a War, which are anti-vaccine mandate songs that are built to inspire you. And that's what this march did. So much so that it inspired truckers in Canada, truckers in Australia and now even truckers in the United States to get in their trucks and start driving to their capitals to say enough is enough. We will not stand by with these mandates. We will stand up for our freedom. So let's take a look at what's happening, right? Shall we? Convays of Canadian trucks are en route to Ottawa for a protest against vaccine mandates. Now this story is a couple days old, but this is just to sort of show you how things started off. This is just a couple days ago. They didn't think it would be that big. Canadian truckers and their supporters who oppose the government's vaccination mandate have begun to arrive in Ottawa, the nation's capital, for a protest outside of Parliament on Saturday. Calling themselves the Freedom Rally or Freedom Convoy, the truckers are traveling from the western, eastern, and southern ends of the country to Ottawa, with the police estimating that 1,000 to 2,000 people will converge there on Saturday. Oh, if only they were right. If only they were right. I am, yeah. Anyways, the loosely organized, you gotta remember, this is the New York Times. The loosely organized convoys, one of which departed British Columbia last Sunday, has raised more than 7 million Canadian dollars in GoFundMe donations en route. Of that 1 million Canadian dollars was released by GoFundMe so far. Um, after the organizers submitted a clear distribution plan for funds being used to cover fuel costs of participants. The company said in an email, most Canadian truckers are vaccinated. Prime Minister Justin Trudeau said at a news conference on Wednesday, citing a close to 90% vaccination rate among them and calling the protesters a small fringe minority. Now these are words that I am sure Justin Trudeau has really grown to, what's the word I'm looking for? Despise, regret? Oh, I sure know he is ashamed of it. Now. Him bringing up the whole 90% vaccination rate of the truck drivers is not supposed to say, oh, they're not gonna do anything or oh, they're on our side. It is meant to divide, rhyming unintendedly, but it is literally trying to divide to say amongst the truck drivers, oh, you're vaccinated, you can't march with us because because this is an anti-vaccine mandate march and something like their anti-vaccine mandate convoy. And that's what it is. But the thing is, is that the truck drivers are smarter than that. We're not going to let politicians divide us anymore. I say we as if I'm a truck driver, but you know what I'm saying. The people that are against these mandates are not going to be divided by politicians anymore. We're going to stand with both vaccinated and unvaccinated people to say enough is enough. I, there's this beautiful image I saw floating around, and if I can find it, I'm gonna show it on screen right now, of a lady, and the two ladies actually holding a sign that says, uh, she's vaccinated, she's unvaccinated, but we're standing together to resist these vaccine mandates. That is the soul and core of our entire movement, and that is why there are thousands and tens of thousands of truck drivers and people that are now converging in Ottawa of Canada. So <laughs> Justin Trudeau calling it a small fringe minority, he's gonna wanna bite those words in a second. But jumping to a different side of this, before we move on to what actually happened, we gotta touch on Elon Musk a little bit. Elon Musk throws a spotlight on Canadian truck convoy with tweet. Here's a nice photo of trucks. This is it right here. Let's take a look at what Elon Musk tweeted because this is beautiful. Now, Elon Musk has been making some very political tweets lately and not all oh, Trump this or all oh, Biden that, just talking about leaders and tyrants and all those. Um, but this is an image he posted. Taking a break from politics for a while, here's a nice photo of some trucks. But if you take a nice look at that snowy landscape and remember that it is in fact January 30th, 2022, you're gonna realize these trucks are there for a specific purpose. I wonder what this small fringe minority of trucks are there to do, right? I wonder. But that is just a little bit of what Elon Musk was doing because he said more. He said more. Oh, he's not done. It was his second tweet in several days that seemed to throw support behind the Canadian truckers protesting the federal government's vaccine mandate. He tweeted Canadian truckers rule and look at how many likes he got on this tweet. He got one, two, nope, 400,000 likes on this in just a few hours. And it's been a couple days now, but still. 434,000 likes. That is power right there. That is power. 
But now, we need to see. How well does this power and all these people who are standing against these vaccine mandates measure up? Uh-oh. This is just a small taste of it. Jack Posobiec tweets this out from the heart of the protests. They are singing their national anthem in Canada. That is beautiful right there. That is an image of a people that are coming together to stand up against something. Now I'm willing to bet there are conservatives in this crowd and there are uh, labor supporters in this crowd. Those are the two parties in Canada, although there's a few more. I think there's liberal Democrats. I'm not that well educated on Canadian politics. I hope there's some 17, out, 17 year old out there in Canada that's talking about this that knows a lot more about Canadian politics than I. But I know there's plenty of political parties in Canada that have very differing views. Canada is a vastly political country, just like America is. But these people are all coming together and I love the little, the lens effective guy. It looks like a cake pop now that I think about it. It's a weird thing, but it, it looks like an earth as well. You know, it's, it's globed out. So the people that are coming together in Canada to stand up for what they believe in. That is something, that, that's a work of art. That's beauty right there, but it gets better. Here is them uh, in uh, what Jack is calling Truckistan, but this is uh, <laughs> Canada as well. And look at this. You hear them going crazy out there? Now, I wanted to point something out actually before we continue on. Look at what this truck says. Come on, guys. What is that? This is a uh, truck Trudeau? Oh, I see what it says. Let's move on before this video gets demonetized. Uh, <laughs> oh. Well, that's a funny thing to say. Anyways, a uh, massive convoy of truckers have now blockaded the U.S.-Canadian border crossing in Alberta. That's right. They're even standing up at the American border now. Look at this. As far as the eye can see, trucks. And they all fly their proud Canadian flag so high. Look at that. One, two, three, four. I can't even count how many flags are in this picture or this video. And they're going in multiple directions. There's trucks over there. There's trucks right here. All, and I think there's four lanes. One, I think, is that, a, that might be like a shoulder, but one, two, three, four. And then I think there's two or three lanes over there. And then hold on, rewind the video, because it's also, I think that's a train back there. I was about to say, there's more trucks, but then look out into the horizon, the horizon. So you can imagine that this small fringe minority is quite upset to be getting out there, right? They're going literally from the border all the way to the capital of the nation, Ottawa. Let me remind you guys, if I'm remembering correctly, Canada is like the third or fourth biggest nation in the world, right behind Russia and China. This nation is massive. Now it's all condensed a lot down to the south, but people came from all over Canada, from the north, the west, the east, and the south. They all converged. Some people were driving for days to get to the, can the Canadian capital of Ottawa. And they've arrived, and they're making their voices heard. So what does the Prime Minister, the fairly and duly elected leader of the nation, although it, it does work a little different there, it's a parliamentary system, but anyways, what did he have to say about all this? I know this pandemic is frustrating. It's frustrating that after two years, we're not done fighting COVID-19. But over the past few days, Canadians have been shocked and frankly disgusted by the behavior displayed by some people protesting in our nation's capital. I want to be very clear, we're not intimidated by those who hurl abuse at small business workers and steal food from the homeless. We won't give in to those who fly racist flags. Like the one person who was carrying a confederate flag in Canada? That doesn't sound right. And we won't cave to those who engage in vandalism or dishonor the memory of our veterans. There is no place in Canada for this behavior, so to those responsible, it needs to stop. 
And to those who join the convoy but are uncomfortable with the symbols of hatred and division on display, be courageous and speak out. Do not stand for or with intolerance and hate. Now, as you can see, the Prime Minister of Canada received quite the ratio for this. 17,000 replies to his meager 15,000 likes. This man has 5, nearly 6 million followers on Twitter. He is a world leader of a major first world country. A member of the Commonwealth. And he's getting ratioed because even the people that could support Trudeau to the highest degree and say, yeah, I'm a proud liberal. I voted for my my member of parliament who then voted Justin Trudeau and all that stuff. I'm a proud supporter of Justin Trudeau can say, look, I support you, Justin, but this is insanity. This is crazy. I can't stand by this. So I, too, will join the thousands, the tens of thousands of people that are ratioing you in your replies. But it's not just Canada. That is part of the Commonwealth that is now saying enough is enough. No, now Australia has convoy starting up. This is as good as it gets. Chaos as convoy descends on Australia's capital to protest COVID-19 vaccine mandates. Yada yada, Daniel Andrews. Uh, Australian drivers have taken inspiration from a freedom convoy in Canada to drive to Canberra and protest against vaccine mandates. The Victoria's premier has warned booster shots will soon be mandatory. I forgot to mention it to you guys. Australia and Canada need to stand up, need to stand up because they're already, they're so far gone. Booster shots will be mandatory. Now, I don't know what they're mandatory for, but them just saying that is scary enough to me. Protesters from all around the country arrived in the nation's capital on Monday as part of the convoy to Canberra demonstration. The convoy of cars between Pheasants, Nest, and uh, New South Wales and the capital trailed for several kilometers. And I doubt they'll show as many pictures of the actual convoy itself, but look at all these images of people who are together. And of course, some car wrecks, because that's how it works. But yeah, and some trucks. I can't even read this out loud, but there you go. There you go. Just look at the image. There you go. So here's a picture of some convoys. I think this might actually, or no, this, is this in Canada? Okay, so this is Ottawa, Canada. I was like, there is no snow in Australia, uh, at least not in most parts of it. Uh, but yeah, here you go. In Canada, that's, that's what inspired it a little bit. And just a lot more stuff about it. They obviously aren't going to show many pictures, but there you go. Holding the Australian flag. People are proud. People are proud. The strength of all of us together is unstoppable, is what the speakers at this rally are saying in Canada. I'm here today. I'm joking, I'm joking. I know what it is to feel small and insignificant and powerless. The words and actions of one person might not feel like they can do very much, but when we band together, all of our small voices together roar like a convoy. The strength of all of us together is unstoppable. That's so beautiful right there. People standing up to fight for it. And then this is what Big Tech does. GoFundMe turned around and froze $100,000 of the assets acquired through the donation campaign for the convoy to Canberra. And they did something even similar uh, to the to the to the convoy in Canada as well. They froze a lot of the money in it. They were only able to get about a million or so Canadian dollars out before GoFundMe said, hold up, let's take a look at this and are now holding on to the money. How are they gonna pay all the truckers for gas? How are they gonna take care of it? Is the question. All sorts of insanity like this is happening all across the world. And it's good insanity because it's saying, actually, it's the, it's the essence of insanity. They're no longer going to stand by and say, listen, maybe we'll get our rights back or something like that. No, they're going to stand up and say, listen, I, we've been through this for, for years now. Are we done? Are we tired? Are we going to stand up and do something? So they are standing up and doing something, not going out there and saying, all right, I'm going to start hurting people or saying I'm going to burn things down like a certain group of people did nearly two years ago when they didn't feel like they were getting the justice they deserved. So when these people who feel like they are getting the justice they deserve with these mandates, they're getting in their cars, they're getting in their trucks, they're driving down the interstate, they're driving whatever the uh, ca Canadian highway system is. I'm, I'm too American, but driving all the way to their capital of Ottawa and saying, all right, Trudeau, you're going to flee the capital. You're going to say you caught COVID-19. You're going to call us all hateful. You're going to call us terrorists. But we're going to stand up and say, listen, we want our freedom back. So give it back. No mandates, none of that madness. And that's how it goes. So I decided to do something a little fun for this. We have a brand new shirt. 
available for you guys in support of the truckers. Here's the design. We ride with the truckers. It's got the Australian, the Canadian, and the American flag for all three convoys and more convoys starting up. There's hoodies, of course, if you're up in Canada, you don't want to get cold. Uh, and then, of course, we also have t-shirts. So if you want to wear one to rock in support of our truck drivers who are happening all across the world, there are truck convoys starting up in America. And we're probably more than likely going to be talking about that tomorrow on our very first weekly show. Once again, be sure to tune in over on the new Crump Live channel, link in the description. There's all sorts of craziness like this that is going to be great. I need to really work on saying craziness, don't I? Because it can be good and bad. This is the good type of crazy. This is, this is good trouble, as some people would say. So we've got our truckers driving down the road, and I would love for you guys to check out this shirt. It's over on our Teespring. Link is in the description. Uh, be sure to support the channel. Thank you so much. So how will this convoy and Mandate March saga end? Well, who knows, but I do know that our leaders are aware of how loud we are, are aware how much we care, and know that we are willing to do what it takes to get our freedom back. What will you do? Thank you guys so much for watching, and aside from all that, I'll see you next time, Freethinkers. Don't forget to spread the virus of intelligence.